the R7 booster, the most launched rocket in history. Over 1,000 launches, has like loads of different versions from the 60s till now, from Sputnik to Soyuz, so much different stuff. Very epic booster, so let us do that. Let's make all of them in KSP, starting with the main booster. So let's get, yeah. 60s this thing first started flying yeah and uh, yeah like i said we're already making all of them in kerbal space programs kind of like the evolution of the r7 booster so um basically if you don't know what it is it's the one everyone it's sputnik so it's it's the you know the thing with the four boosters it does the core live cross thing very awesome it, very awesome the design aside from like engine improvements and some slight tweaks to the fuel tanks and crap the main booster is literally like not changed from the 60s, which is just insane that it, and it's still flying today. I don't know, that's either a testament to how bad technological progress has been or how good this booster is. I don't know. One of the two, but uh, the first uh, orbital usage of this thing, this thing was originally an ICBM, but the first orbital rocket usage, the first non-boom-boom -boom usage of it, um, was the Sputnik. Sputnik. Um, to launch the, well, spot, you know, we're in America, and in, in, in Soviet Union they call it like Sputnik, Sp I don't know, I call it Sputnik, um, because I'm American. Anyway, um, it was to launch Sputnik, which is the first satellite ever launched into space, which is very epic, and you can see here us doing our launch right now of the Sputnik. Go ahead and light those edges. Beautiful waterfall. Um, the waterfall was not very epic. Um, so the, um, the Sputnik basically is literally just the R7 booster with a modified fairing to put this little ball thing in there. Uh, the R7 is just the core stage with the four strap-on boosters. There is, despite having four nozzles per engine, these are actually only one engine, so there's one engine per booster, and then there are some vernier thrusters to help uh, guide the rocket because the main engines themselves can't actually gimbal, so they have those vernier engines to help the thing gimbal. So, and uh, the actually one of the more famous things about the um, R7 is a Korolev Cross. If you don't know what that is, it is basically the name of the the fun way the kind of the boosters will separate here. You'll see them when they're about to separate right now. They do this kind of like spinny thing way. If you don't know what it is, very famous. Um, it's like the coolest booster separation in spaceflight history. Well, my voice is dying, but yeah, it's like the coolest booster separation in spaceflight history. Very awesome. The same after Sergei Korolev or Korolev. Or I like Korolev, but that's not accurate. It's more like Korolev. Um, because Korolev sounds fun. Um, is the actual, it's the name of the guy who designed the R7 booster. So there you go, gonna go ahead and circularize, and then you're going to detach the payload, and then we are going to move on to the next one. And these are actually, it's actually cool looking at the evolution, because the booster itself doesn't actually change. It's just there are just slight modifications to like upper stages and fairings and blah, 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 blah. But um, it's cool, because there's only like small tweaks um, um, each different thing, but by the end, it looks, looks completely different, to be honest. Um, so, next is Luna. Luna, Luna, Luna. So, uh, Luna is, uh, the, basically the second space program of the Soviet Union. Um, and that's basically where they launched these probes, um, to the moon. Uh, most of the missions failed, but, you know, some of them succeeded, and they were able to crash some payloads into the moon. They were able to take some pictures with stolen CIA cameras. Very epic. And they were also able to fly by. Also, very cool, right? Um, and it also is very cool. Haha, <laughs> transitions. Plugs are very cool. So you can hit the subscribe button if you want to do that. You can also join our Discord and join our Patreon, become a member, go to pilotshop.com merch. I also have a new channel, um, Pilot Stream Highlights card, wherever that goes. We do stream highlights on that channel. Very epic. You should go check it out. Awesome. Sick. All right, we are launching. Okay. Went a little bit over time on those plugs. So this is Luna, is basically a R7 booster, but with a tiny little upper stage added to the top of it. So. Um, the tiny upper stage basically can help the thing basically get out to the moon, do the translunar injection um, as we go ahead and uh, do the booster staging away again. And then we'll be ready to deploy the payload in just a moment. The Luna um, orbiter satellite thing is actually very similar to the Sputnik, except it has this little engine at the bottom of it um, to help kind of maneuver and control itself, its orientation. So um, there we go, it can separate the stage. Time up up wrap laps and it'll circularize and then we will head on out and do it. We'll do a little crash or crash aroni into the moon aroni moon a dooney moon and blah, 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 blah. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Um so there it is. And boom. And there it goes. Oh, the waterfall plume looks so cool. Look at that. That 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 is just waterfall is a great mod. Great, great, great mod. So, um, just about to finish the burn, and then we will be um, just yeah impacting the moon with that uh, with that little probe there. So we 
little bit of camera change there, and we, yay, plop. All right, on to the next one. So after Luna is actually a very, so this is Vostok. Um, so Vostok is basically a very small change. So it actually, there's actually no changes to the base rock. There are some very small changes to the upper stage, but uh, not really many that you could really make in KSP. So I actually didn't change the upper stage at all. But uh, this is where, this is crude, right? So this is when Yuri Gagarin was, was on this one and you know, you got first man in space, pretty nuts. Um, so yeah, they basically added the little capsule thing to the top of it. I don't even really call it a capsule. I don't know what you call the Soviet thing. It's big ball, weird circle ball, metal, metal ball, metal, metal ball, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, instead of putting the probe um, to go out to the moon, they put the, the put the Vostok spacecraft, which is basically it's like this little bottom bit with the maneuvering, and then there's a little circle ball thing on top, um, which is where the uh, the person will sit. Um, and then it's also what they use as the re-entry capsule pod descent module. Module, that's there. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so that's about that made. And then we will transition back over to the launch pad, and we'll have a look at the launch of this, uh, of this craft. If you look at our Kerbal, that's Werner Von Kerman. Um, I speak of, when, last stream I did, um, I had the viewers. Um, I, I said that I could, I would launch like 20 viewers, 20 viewers, I'd make about Kerbals for 20 people and then launch them on my, on, on one of the launches on stream. Um, yeah, so we made 20, and by the time we actually got to the launch, the game was so laggy with all the Kerbals, because um, I had them all mounted on the outside of the rocket, it didn't even work. So I said, hey, I'll just be including these, they're the 20 random Kerbals I created for viewers, um, just intermittently in videos. So this is Werner Von Kerbin is going to be on. Um, on today's flight now as we separate the bottom stage and are now firing the upper stage which is getting a little bit spinny now he's fine no problems all perfectly to arrive this is russia red a lot of red a lot of fun stuff happens over in superior communism land anyway um we're going to now circularize the uh the craft and then we will separate it and then we will just uh, do a quick entry and landing and uh, because the, the Vostok actually had a very interesting way of landing which was yeah Bit of a meme. So I'm gonna go ahead, separate that, and then we will just cut straight over to the entry and landing. There's quite a few landing and entries here, so I try and go through quite as quickly um, because they get boring after a while. So here we come, the weird metal ball thing just falling through the atmosphere. Very janky, very Soviet. Um, and there we go. And they're ready. The most Kerbal thing that was this thing is they weren't confident that the parachute could slow the craft down sufficiently for a soft, safe landing. So the the, uh, the, the the cosmonauts, they're cosmonauts over there. They had to jump out. I have a year ago, he, he jumped out, which is, yeah, interesting. Um, <laughs> they had to bail on your rocket. So there we go. Next one. We're going lightning McQueen speed here. Cut chow, right? <laughs> Gee, that was really cringy. Um, Malnia. So Malnia is basically just an, an extra stage added. Um, so the upper stage, uh, the upper, upper stage is basically almost... Uh, left untouched, but there is like this middle stage, which is quite big actually, um, which you're going to add. And the uh, Malnia, um, they did um, both Leo payloads, and uh, I believe it was mainly used for interplanetary payloads. So what is our payload going to be? I didn't even show you guys what our payload's going to be. Oh, it'll have to be a surprise. You'll have to wait like 30 seconds. Whoa, pretty nuts. As we start our gravity turn now with the Malnia, which is really fun to say, Malnia. Not as fun as Zvezda. Zvezda is super fun to say. A lot of a lot of Russian words are fun for some reason. Like communism, which is totally a Russian word. Um, or superior, which is like the only word in the Russian dictionary. Um, so, uh, totally. Um, getting ready for uh, fairing separation. Oh my gosh, it's Mr. Banana Man. Yo, who remembers Mr. Banana Man? Um, this is, I started this kind of meme when I, my channel was a little bit smaller. Um, if you don't know what this is, um, it's basically Mr. Banana Man. He was just this random thing who just can, who just randomly appears in my video from time to time. It, yep, it's just Mr. Banana Man. There you go. So he's a bit of a meme. He's been on. He's been doing some pretty fun stuff. He's been on a delivery van. Uh, he got shipped up on some rockets, or he made an SSTO in space, or oh, he built a rocket in space. It was, it, whatever mission he was on. Um, so Mr. Banana Man will just keep cropping up time to time, and I realized I hadn't included him for a while, so. Here's a Mr. Banana Man who is going to get on into low Earth orbit like so. And then he'll be getting ready to move on to the next one. Let's see, comment what you think the next one is. Let's see who knows they're in the ho-ho, comment, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Vos, 
Cod, Vostok. I was about to say Vostok, but we already did Vostok. Vostok is another fun one to say. Vostok. Vostok. Um, so yeah, um, Voskhod is basically like the bridge, in my opinion, between like the old designs and the more modern design. That's not really true, but at least making KSB kind of felt like that. So, um, Voskhod is basically like a Soyuz type booster rocket thing with a, um, older Soyuz, with an older like Vostok type spacecraft. So the rocket is actually virtually identical, um, Granted, it's not identical in real life because they made some engine and fuel tank improvements were actually quite substantial. But the size and proportions and staging setup is basically the same as it is today, basically, um, for Soyuz uh, with the R7. Uh, so, but the spacecraft is a, it's very, very, very similar to Voss stock. Uh, I have to remember what I have to say. Uh, it just adds these little extensions to the top inside because the, the big, the big gimmick about um, Voss God was like, hey, spacewalks exist now so that was kind of the thing so they have this little airlock and crap on it so um that's kind of the thing that Voskhod tried to accomplish and, and did yeah first space off which is pretty cool um uh but yeah back in like the 60s though that was um actually no i crap cracked myself r7 was flying in the 50s yeah because uh Sputnik was late 50s haha <laughs> i know what i'm talking about i am genius and i should make a quick little change to the engine setup here because it was kind of exploding in the way i had it so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it like that very 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 epic and then we will going to be getting ready i mean i start like i feel like the soyuz is modern but the soyuz has been flying since like the 80s i think which is nuts soyuz has been around forever r7 has been around forever <laughs> how is this how have they not updated the booster design ah, i mean they made protons but either way we are at the launch pad for Voska. lift off very very epic all right so going on our way into orbit with Voska. we have two kerbals now very epic um, we're gonna start our gravity turn, and that's, you know, basically the, the, uh, fifth, fifth, fourth, fifth, fourth, I don't remember what launch this is. Um, there is, uh, Sputnik, Vostok, Malnia, this is the fourth, fourth launch, right? No, no, Sputnik, Luna, Vostok, Malnia, this is the fifth launch, fifth launch, the fifth, fifth launch of the booster, so you probably get what's going on here, so you probably get, get the memo about how the booster is working crap, so, Gonna jettison the fairings. I love how I'm just like making this up as I go. Like, oh, well, what am I doing? Make a mental let just talk about what's going on. No, I have an empty water glass on my desk. <laughs> Peak quality content. So much better than Matt Lown, who like plans out his videos and stuff. What do you mean planning out my videos? I guess that's what you, when, you, when you try to do daily uploads. Try, you know, keyword try. We're gonna do it now from now on. We're gonna get two months of solid, not gonna miss a day for two months. That's my, that's my goal here. And then I can miss days. Just kidding. We will never miss days ever. But I would really like to go two months without missing a day, which is nuts. <laughs> I don't know. I, have, I don't think I've told you guys about all this plans. Um, but I'm going to be trying to shooting for in the next, um, starting this week or definitely next week. I'm going to try to be doing 12 pieces of content a day, which is a lot. Oh boy, it's not going to be fun. It's, I mean, that's up from like five pieces of content which we've been doing right now. So, I mean, stream highlights are three, so I don't know if those really count. But um, either way. Voskhod is on the ground. So now we can move on. As I continue, I continue my rambling nonsense. Nonsense. I can't even speak. It's kind of late. Um, Soyuz. Soyuz, Soyuz, Soyuz. I can like speed build Soyuz at this time because I have been using the same design for my Soyuz for like an absolute eternity. Like I even have a tutorial on it. Oh, not so subtle plug. Um, uh, because, yeah, that's literally the same design I've been using for ever, so I can, like, basically speed build this in, like, two, three minutes. Um, so, there's Soyuz. Um, I just did, like, the double up little solar panel things, because I, I think the big solar panels are a little bit too big, um, but the, the ones I have on there, I think, are, they, I mean, it's, it doesn't look nice, but, you know, I'm trying to, like, make them look, try too thick, so it kind of looks like they're bigger. Point is, Soyuz! So, I'm um, going to go ahead and attach that, literally, to the, uh, to the Voss Cod rocket. Um, and then we will just be putting a fairing and then it'll be getting ready for launching after I've set up my staging and then set up the action groups and then it'll be ready to launch this next one. There we are. Welcome to Launch Right. I also recolored everything because the Soyuz is kind of notoriously has this like kind of 
darky orange brown type color to it. So there we go in the sky. Ignore like the crashed starship plane there. That was just a mess of a stream a while ago. Um, that's why that's, I never cleaned it up. Um, point is, we are now launching, getting ready for a booster separation. This is probably the most, uh, nah, not the most visually distinct, but it has that launch escape tower on top, which does make it look a little bit more unique than all of some of the other designs. Um, as we go ahead and stage the boosters, getting ready for a fairing separation, and then be getting ready for a launch escape tower jettisoning um, very shortly after that, which is very epic. There it goes. There goes launch escape tower, and then we get ready for core separation, and then ignition of the upper stage. There it goes. So, just the last few hundred meters a second before we can get our way into orbit. And then this will be the final crewed launch of the video. There is going to be two more after this, though. Um, very epic, right? You know, almost, we're almost to modern day, which is, I guess, kind of cool. Uh, there we go. We're going to separate the spacecraft. And then we'll quickly do a little re-entry there with the descent module. So, one of the gimmicky things about the... Uh, so it has these little uh, retro landing engines that fire like a split second before uh, touch on just to lighten the impact just a little bit. I'm usually pretty good at timing them, the firing of those, but I absolutely memed myself this time. And you'll, you'll see what happens here. It's kind of funny. So here we go. We Oh! Yeah, no. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. Ah! Firing those probably made the landing even harder. <laughs> oh boy. Irony! Anyway, um... We're gonna speed run through this one. We're gonna absolutely speed run because this is this is progress. And if you don't know what progress is, um, it is literally, literally a Soyuz, exactly like a Soyuz. And people are gonna comment, uh, actually, um, actually, um, there's a few there's a few differences uh, between N and S Soyuz. Um, so there's there's no actual. So there's a in, in the Soyuz there's the descent orbit and. Um, the sent orbit and then like the the, um, the sent orbit and then service module, um, and then in progress they're all they, they don't separate they're all just glued together. But basically it's literally just a Soyuz. No one cares about progress. It's lame anyway. Not really. <laughs> get some progress fans in there get upset. Um, but yeah, it's literally just something. I like. I didn't think you guys wanted to launch literally the exact same thing without a launch escape tower. Um, just launch again. So um, now we're moving on to the last one, the Soyuz frigate, which is another fun one to say. So this is basically um, the big. So this comes in a few different options, but the big fairing one is what I like because I think the big fairing Soyuz is actually pretty funny. And they're still launching today. I mean, so is the normal Soyuz, but uh, this is still launching today for the ESA quite uh, quite often. I believe it launches the OneWeb subs, subs, satellites. Um, it has this little uh, third stage or fourth stage, depending on how you count the stages at the top, which is this tiny puny little like kick stage thing. But uh, the big standout feature is the is the really big old fairing it has on top of it. It's a really cool fairing. It's actually one of my favorite fairings in... Uh, in space flight. I don't know why you'd have a favorite fairing, but it's my it's, it might be my favorite fairing. I don't know. It's, geez, but what the crap am I talking about fairings? I mean the Falcon fairing is pretty cool too, but I like I like that fairing. Um it's a it's a pretty cool looking fairing. Anyway <laughs> This is like the most uninteresting thing to tie. Let, let's talk about fairings and which one has the best shape. I also really like the top of okay I'm gonna shut up about fairings down. Yeah. Um so there we go. I don't know what that explosion was about, but uh, see now this one I tried to for this one I just tried to see how much payload I can launch. I initially tried to do a, a full ore tank. It was just a little bit short of orbit with the full ore tank, so this is a little bit a little bit of ore is drained out of it. So um, yeah, um, so that is it. That is all eight major versions. Once we get this thing circularized of the R7, the evolution, the complete history, remade in the most quality of manner in Kerbal Space Program. So, very epic, right? I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I, I, yeah, I hope you do. Um, on screen, um, when it fades to black in a second or two, will be all of all our channel members. Big thanks for anyone who's become a channel member. Also, big thanks to all the Patreons who will come on screen right now. But that'll do it for me, so I'd like to thank you for watching. Until next time, please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. Until next time. And bye.